Washington State Department of Transportation is getting ready to start several major road projects in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. This will even change the way people travel on the interstate bridge on I-5. Joining us now yeah, is the communications manager with the Washington State, State Department of Transportation, Tamara Greenwell. Good morning, Tamara. Good to see you. Good morning, Jenny and Emily. How are you? Great, great. So you guys have so much uh, going on this summer. So first want to start with um, the signs. Uh, WashDOT changing the signs to real-time signs. So what does that mean? Yeah, so this is one of uh, the busiest constructions WashDOT has ever seen in Clark County, uh, which is challenged with the pandemic and, and furloughs that we're working through. Um, but we're still pushing to get these uh, real-time travel time signs, uh, new traffic cameras, so folks can kind of check traffic before they head out the door. Uh, the signs will also post weather information, so if it's snowing or icy, people will have that information in advance of traveling uh, along the corridor. Oh, yeah, so really helpful for, for real time changing travel conditions mm -hmm. there. Uh, also working to change ramp meters? Yeah, uh, well, we currently have two in uh, the city of Vancouver and Clark County, and we'll be installing uh, four new ones and then upgrading an additional one. So pretty much on I-5 from 78th Street down to the Interstate Bridge, there'll be new ramp meters. Uh, and the function of those, they're adaptive. So they sort of turn on before congestion begins to help um, expand uh, and shorten the length of congestion along the corridor. It's not going to we'll still see traffic backups and delays during the morning commute, but it'll help expand, uh, sorry, shorten the time in which congestion begins and ends each morning during usual travel conditions, which we're not currently seeing. Okay, all right. Well, whatever uh, makes it better, I mm -hmm. guess. You know, Washtenaw <laughs> making so many changes, and, and that includes the bus lanes as well. So, what's that all about? Yeah, so we've partnered with CTRAN uh, to um, build out the shoulder on southbound I-5 from the 99th Street um, Traffic Center, uh, Transit Center, down to the Interstate Bridge. And so during the morning commute, when traffic is stacked up through the I-5 corridor, it will, once it's installed, CTRAN buses will be able to use the shoulder of the highway when traffic is below 35 miles an hour to bypass congestion in an effort to provide transit uh, users with more reliable travel. So they've got to get to work at a certain time. They know that regardless of how traffic looks that day, they're still going to get there if they use the same bus time each day. Yeah, definitely. I think incentivizing that public transit as well. So uh, good improvements there. I know, you know, all of these changes, including some of the changes for uh, the interstate bridge, I'm, I'm sure are going to be uh, difficult for drivers maybe as they're happening, but but good in the long run. I'm, I'm curious, did the pandemic affect the timing of any of this at all or, or change plans in any way? Uh, timing, no, we're still on schedule and we're working to really stay on schedule. Uh, the planning and process, absolutely. We have a lot of new um, safety protocols in place that need to be followed that do make some of our work um, uh, longer to do because our folks need more breaks. Uh, um, you know, they're wearing all of the safety gear. If they're working within six feet of each other, they have to wear these respirator, uh, almost like helmet suits. And so uh, it certainly takes longer to get the work done. Um, but we're, we're working to have the ATM system installed before the closure of the northbound span of the interstate bridge uh, in September for the replacement of the trunnion pieces on the 103-year-old structure. Yeah, so that should probably be the, the one that people notice the biggest impact, right, as far as traffic? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we're uh, working with ODOT on that project to um, uh, install new trunnions. Uh, they're not made at your local hardware store. They had to be fabricated. A lot of folks have asked, oh, why couldn't you have done it sort of, you know, when there's less traffic? And unfortunately, um, the fabrication couldn't be pushed up. We looked into it. Uh, so September 12th through the 20th, the northbound span of the interstate bridge will close completely. Traffic in both directions of the interstate will use the southbound span, and we use what we call a zipper barrier, that in the morning commute, there'll be two lanes southbound, and then the afternoon commute, there'll be two lanes northbound, and we'll move the zipper barrier in the middle of the day to allow that to occur all on the southbound span. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing this for about three and a half years. Uh, and so now we're getting close and we really wanna make sure everyone knows that, know that it's coming so that they can be prepared to use alternate routes, use alternate uh, forms of travel, maybe delay travel. Uh, will our traffic models show that we'll need even more people than have, that stayed home during the peak of the pandemic 
to alter their travel or will see congestion last for up to 16 hours a day. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. So if you're one of those employees who's working from home right now, maybe consider staying work from home right. for, for a few more <laughs> yeah. months just to help with all that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate the update and I'm sure we'll be checking in with you a little closer to the project as well. Have a good morning. Thank you. You too.